Hey guys, it's Chris. From their modern counterparts to legends that paint them in a new light, here are eight examples of why people think the dragons were actually real. Number 8. Descendants of Dragons in Real Life Often, when trying to map out the past, we look to the present and see what kinds of animals exist that could explain those ancient or mythological creatures. Not unlike how we can trace certain lizards or reptiles back to the days of the dinosaur. For dragons, there are certain creatures that easily seem to be draconic in nature, even if they don't have all the features that the legends say. The most obvious one is the creature known as the Komodo dragon. This one is likened to dragons because of its massive size. It is, in fact, the largest lizard species in the world today. The Komodo dragon can get up to 10 feet in length and weigh 366 pounds at times, though this is considered rare. And that was the largest verified Komodo dragon in existence. So how do they get this big? The Komodo dragon lives on only five islands in Indonesia, and it's believed these specialized ecosystems have a case of giantism, meaning it grew well beyond the normal range of creatures within its genus. And not unlike dragons, the Komodo dragons are the apex predators of their domain due to their massive sizes. And while they don't breathe fire, they do have a toxic bite, and it can kill an adult deer. Getting anywhere near a Komodo dragon's mouth is just a terrible idea. Another huge explanation for why people have always believed that dragons existed at one point can be due to dinosaur bones. Imagine a few thousand years ago, you're traveling and you come across a giant skull or a humongous bone. Clearly, it belongs to a fearsome creature that could get you. If you find the bones, it has to be real, right? And dragons are often called flying lizards, of which there are several in the world today, including a species called flying dragons. So if you mix the flying dragon's flesh-like wings with the body and size of a dinosaur, maybe even the Komodo, you could have a dragon from lore, theoretically. Number 7. There may not be fossils of dragons. When it comes to the ancient creatures of our histories, both dinosaurs and beyond, the biggest evidence that proves that they were real is fossils. It's through fossils that we get to see glimpses into the past, and then study them to see what they all mean, how they fit together, and what the species were likely like given their composition. However, despite all the fossils we've found, we've not yet found any dragons. Well, at least not any dinos that spat fire. Yet that doesn't necessarily mean they didn't exist. It just means they might not have left a fossil at all. The process known as fossilization is very complex and takes place over the course of many, many years. But more surprisingly, the number of animals that produce fossils are very low. Now, this may seem odd due to all the fossils of plants, animals, and of course dinosaurs we've found over the years. However, if you think about how many millions of years the Earth has been around and all the plants and animals that live on it, if all the bones fossilized, the ground would be packed with them from top to bottom more than likely. Which brings us back to dragons. While many TV shows and movies love to show them as massive creatures with impossibly strong bone structures that may not have been what they were. They could have been like sharks and had cartilage-like bones that wouldn't fossilize very easily. Or they could have lived and died in places that weathered the bones down so they couldn't be fossilized at all. And, of course, they just might not have been found yet. Scientifically speaking, there are many reasons for dragons to have not left fossils, which also applies to many other animals and plant species we have yet to potentially discover. And now for number 6. But first, be sure to subscribe to World List if you haven't already, and click that notification bell for more videos like these. Number 6. Where did the idea of dragons come from? Everything in the universe has an origin. It may be big or it may be small, but it has a place of birth, including ideas and stories featuring mythical creatures. However, when it comes to dragons, no one knows where exactly they came from. Some of the earliest documented pieces featuring dragons come from the Greeks, the Sumerians, and even early Mesopotamia. They're defined as serpent-like beings that were struck down by the gods themselves at times. Many ancient Chinese kingdoms from the past have their own stories about dragons, including them being a source of rain, which is why they're an important part of their culture to this day. Some are even shown to be the mounts or steeds of various gods, thus showing their importance in the mythology. As the Middle Ages and the rise of Christianity came in, the use of dragons became more pronounced, 
and eventually came to the West when the New World was discovered. And they've never left since, metaphorically speaking. What this all boils down to, though, is that no one is really sure the hows, the wheres, or the whys dragons were born. Were they simply a creation of the mind? Or did something inspire their appearance? Maybe the biggest evidence there is for proof of life is that we don't know where the idea of dragons came from. Number 5. No two dragons are the same. If you were tasked with drawing a picture of a dragon, you would likely draw a massive lizard-like creature with scales that were as hard as diamonds, a head that was big and scary, wings that were massive, and more than likely, you'd have it breathing fire. However, some of the earliest portraits of dragons differed depending on the culture and the people describing them. For example, in the Eastern cultures, they were defined more as four-legged serpents, ones that could not fly. Yet in the European nations, they could fly, and they could also breathe fire. Though not every culture had that detail infused in the lore. And in the Greek mythology, there were many creatures that could breathe fire like the Chimera. Another thing that varied was their size. Some cultures had dragons being small but powerful, yet others claimed they could be miles in length. Certain ancient stories talked of how dragons could speak the human language, and they were very intelligent, while others had them as mindless beasts that needed to be tamed or slain. Some lived in the sky, others on the ground, or in caves, and even underwater. Just about every description is different. Usually, you would define this as a storytelling device, one tailored to each culture. But there is another possible answer, one that is prevalent in our world today. The notion of a varied species. What if dragons not only existed, but they were varied based on their location? Not unlike birds or cats or dogs of the modern day. It would explain why there are so many differing accounts of dragons all over the world, with variations as to what they were and what they weren't. And as science has proven, entire species of animals have been wiped out by history with little trace of them, which could have happened to the dragons. Number 4. Born from fear? A popular belief of why dragons didn't exist has to do with the minds of humans, as well as animals. If you look at what a dragon is, it's almost a chimera from mythology in some ways. It's a lizard, but it's one that flies, has razor-sharp teeth and claws, and at times can breathe fire and even talk. And that doesn't sound like a singular animal grown up, that sounds like an amalgamation of creatures. This is the belief of many, including anthropologist David E. Jones. He wrote the book An Instinct for Dragons. The notion is intriguing, and humanity has been known to create its own monsters. But is it as simple as that? And what's more, while certain flying creatures and reptiles have frightened humans in the past, is that enough of a trigger to create a whole animal? Many aren't sure that's true, and of course, it's impossible to test. Number 3. The Age of Dinosaurs Most agree that the likely origins of dragons come not from fantasy but from discovery, mainly the discovery of dinosaur bones within the land of various people. Fossils are all over the world, so this does make sense. And since they likely would not have known about dinosaurs in the grand sense, their minds formulated what the dragons could have been instead. While this theory is very plausible, and even likely in certain instances, there is another notion, mainly that dragons might just have lived in the age of dinosaurs themselves. The evidence for this theory lies in the dinosaurs. We know that many dinosaurs were scaly in nature, including the legendary T-Rex. We know that certain beings from that era had fleshy wings that allowed them to fly including the pterosaur. What's more, the age of dinosaurs lasted many millions of years, almost 200 based on estimates. So evolution may just have created a dragon. And since there were numerous extinction-level events during and after the time of dinosaurs, it's entirely plausible that the dragons were merely wiped off the earth alongside the creatures of that age. Number 2 dragons existed? While few, there are those who believe that dragons may have existed at some point in time. While they are often tied to people who believe in Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, they see it as a possible branching point of evolution itself. Which is why there are some out there right now looking for definitive proof of dragons. 
Of course, there are also those who believe that they didn't and don't exist, and have even written books about the subject, such as University of Florida grad student and reptile expert Rachel Keefe. Unfortunately, no, we do not have evidence of dragons on this planet, said Keefe when talking about her book, The Anthropology of Dragons, A Global Perspective, as it explores dragon questions further. We do have evidence of very cool extinct animals that were kind of similar to dragons, but no fire-breathing six-legged vertebrates, I'm afraid. While her beliefs are fair, she's also thinking about the modern interpretations of dragons, of which many agree are likely fantasized. Number 1. The Legend Continues Despite having no definitive proof that dragons exist, pop culture has taken its own view on the legendary and mythological creatures and crafted them into numerous stories. From Harry Potter to The Lord of the Rings and the Game of Thrones series, dragons are everywhere. How to Train Your Dragon had dragons be fierce but lovable, and also trainable. Even Marvel and DC Comics have their own variations on the dragons of lore and what they can do, and on and on it goes. There are stories featuring dragon riders, dragons who can communicate telepathically with various people, ones that breathe fire, ice, lightning, and more. It's even stated by some that you can't have a good fantasy story without mentioning a dragon. While not evidence of life in the literal and scientific sense, all these TV shows, movies, books, comics, and even more prove that people want to believe in dragons and want to think that they're real in some way. And one day, proof may show that they did exist in one form or another. Only time will tell. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this evidence that dragons may have existed? Do you think it could be possible? Do you know of other evidence that may point to their existence? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on World List.